Who is your father? Why, if we had human parents, do we call God our Father? What if this offends us today? How can we understand this? We'll examine Luke 2, verses 40 to 52, Jesus' calling and the topic of God the Father. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth. But Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search, he asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. Did Jesus disobey his parents? The narrative does not record that Jesus disobeyed any parental instructions. It does, however, make a different point, that Jesus' commitment to God's purposes transcended even the expectations of a righteous household. We know that both Joseph and Mary obeyed the law by attending Passover. But Jesus' calling was to eventually become the true Passover lamb. He would ultimately institute new elements at Passover, the bread and wine. So it is that we find him given incredible wisdom at such a young age, able to hold his own with Jewish teachers, highly educated in the Holy Scriptures. Notice a sudden shift in emphasis from parents to child. But he returned to Nazareth with them, and he was subject to them. Who is your father? The phrase, I must be in my father's house, in verse 49, actually refers to more than the temple in Jerusalem. Many translations say, in my father's house, but the King James and others also legitimately translate it as I must be about my father's business. The words house or business are not in the Greek, but the phrase may be legitimately translated as something like, I must be involved in the things of my father. So the word house may be understood as household affairs or business. As we are converted, it's called being born again or born from above. We are to honor our earthly fathers, but the Father who takes precedence is God, our Heavenly Father. Did Jesus obey his parents? To alleviate the fears of parents on earth and to negate any kind of cultish ideas where family is ignored to follow a religious leader, the narrator reminds us that Jesus returned to Nazareth with his parents and obeyed them. Yet here at age 12, Jesus' future mission is becoming evident to the reader. We're told that his parents didn't know what to think, yet Mary stored these things in her heart, perhaps treasuring the extraordinary nature of her son's encounter with learned teachers and wrestling with its significance. Particularly, she may have been just as amazed as were those teachers at his understanding and his answers. Verses 40 and 52 reveal his growing favor with God and people. Why did Jesus teach us to pray to our Father? The idea of God as our Father offends a society which is abandoning patriarchalism in favor of feminism. Male leadership is called evil, and female leadership good. God does not have gender, but described both male and female as very good. Feminine and masculine metaphors are used of God, but Jesus taught us to pray to our Father in heaven. God is a trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one. 
Reducing creation to a competition between sexes insults God, who created male and female to complement each other. Calling God our Father emphasizes His not being dependent upon any other for His identity. Since the Son is generated by the Father, and the Spirit proceeds from the Father. Our human parents were our temporary caregivers on earth, and most of us loved them. The Bible describes Jerusalem above, heaven as the mother of us all, and God in heaven as our true Father. Heaven is also calling us to grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God.